Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in crypto and bringing out a bite-sized pieces. And just like the thumbnail suggests, things are going lower. So first thing we're going to talk about is uh, a little bit of uh, negative news as Coinbase just completely folds and, and decides to actually give up their EARN program as dictated by the SEC. I think this is a mistake and we'll, we'll dive right into it. Also, we're going to take a look at a, a new cryptocurrency bill that's being ushered in, which I'm going to urge you to take a look at and hopefully contact your representatves. And then we're going to go into some more positive things and talk about why banks are going to lose this war and then we'll take a look at the actual good news and put everything in perspective so before we get into that let's just take a look at what's going on into the market and today is as expected a little bit down uh we're at uh 1.87 trillion we uh dipped below 2 trillion like i thought we would and then we kind of uh, went up a little bit and came back back down so it's like a dip within a dip within a dip and uh what I've learned along the way is to not just put everything into the first dip because it seems like there's like a dip and then like a rebound, then another dip, then a harder dip. And before you know it, you're like, man, I uh, I have no money to put into these dips. So I just kind of break things up. So I dollar cost average in and then I dollar cost average even the dips these days because it seems like there's so many. And September is just one of those months which uh, we had talked about before. It's just going to be a, a very volatile and bearish month. So that's what's going on there. And then the actual uh, price of uh, different coins, Bitcoin being one of them, uh, almost uh, 41,000, uh, well, 41.9, maybe we see in the 39 ranges, who knows. Ethereum lost a 3,000 footing, now it's a 28.80, and then Tether, as you may notice, is now in that third spot, overtaking Cardano. And the reason for this is because when everything goes down, uh, investors like to what's called tether up, which means they sell off their positions, they hold in a tether, which is a quote unquote stable coin, and they wait uh, to buy or do whatever they want to do until things just kind of stabilize. So uh, that's why you've got those price action. Everything's just down across the board, except for Avalanche. Avalanche doing 6%. So not too shabby, and then Algorand 1%. So that's what's going on in the market uh, in a nutshell. Let's take a look at what is going on as far as like a little perspective and uh, what's happening with, with Coinbase. But before I do that, I just wanna give you just a little bit of a, of a visual, and that is that this, that I know that we believe that everything's gonna go up uh, exponentially every single day, and it doesn't work like that. So this to me is pretty much uh, most of the crypto uh, market right now, uh, 94, 90% plus. But if you just got in like, I don't know, two days ago, three days ago, not a great timing, but don't worry. If you don't like the price, it'll change. And this is what, how I see things. Everybody's complaining about, ah, it's down 10% or 15%. But in all honesty, if you've been here for any length of time, you are massively, massively up and you are being the pants off of everybody who isn't uh, traditional finance, S&P 500, Dow Jones, things like that. So just kind of keep that in perspective. So that's what we have there. And then this was the story that I, I'm very disappointed, honestly, in, in Coinbase and their decision to do this. I understand why, because the because they did their due diligence. They went to the SEC. They, they sat down with them. They, uh, they played that role. They were good boys and girls. And what did they get? The SEC said, thanks so much for coming in. And guess what? We're going to sue the pants off you if you keep going forward. And that's uh, essentially what is happening here. So Coinbase abandons the plan for the lend. And this is what they stated. And I, I'd, uh, it's just awful. So they, uh, Coinbase comes out and says, look, our goal is to create great products for our customers and to advance our mission to increase economic freedom in the world. As we continue our work to seek regulatory clarity for the crypto industry as a whole, we've made the difficult decision not to launch the USDC APY program. So I guess it was only for the USDC uh, stablecoin, and they were going to give you around 4% just for holding that. And then this is where it kind of comes down to it. We have also discontinued the wait list for this program. Before we go on, I want you to think about if the SEC and the regulatory environment is doing is protecting the investor as far as what is going on here in the statement right here uh we have dis we have uh discontinued the wait list for this program as we turn our work to what come next we had hundreds of thousands of customers from across the country sign up and want to thank you all for your interest but we can't move forward and they pretty much say like look uh we could have given you a nice fat four percent apy on stable coins so instead of keeping your bank which gives you point zero whatever, 1%, something ridiculous, paltry, they would have given me 4%. And the principal would have been guaranteed, as they say right here. So uh, to me, I think this is uh, a battle that has been lost, uh, but not the war. 
And that's really what it comes down to. And then uh, also on top of that, there was a, a meeting with uh, Gary Gensler and he was he gave an interview to the Washington Post. It's the same thing that he talked about in the uh, uh, for the uh, regulatory committee as he came forth uh, from for the senator for uh, or the, the Senate the Senate committee for for housing and banking. And he pretty much said the same exact thing. He's like, look, uh, everything's a security except for Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, because they are fully uh, decentralized or however he termed it. But everything else outside of that is going to be a security. So if you want clarity, that's what Gensler is doing. He's going to say everything's a security. Why is this bad? Well, it's bad because right now you've got uh, Coinbase and Kraken and Voyager and, and every other exchange Binance out there. They're selling unregistered uh, securities. And that is uh, uh, will lead them to fines by the SEC if they if they move forward. Also, uh, the actual projects themselves they actually are dabbling and putting forth unregistered securities, which means they're going to get fined as well. The only way this works is if Congress steps in, Senate steps in, and says, "Look, we got to change the, some of these uh, these rules, and we need to actually have some type of grandfather in clause, like what Hester Pierce talked about." Uh, who is uh, one of the commissioners uh, for uh, central banking. And uh, she could say, or the SEC, and she could say, look, uh, we need to do these the, 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 these types of things. If not, we're going to have a lot of problems and uh, just grandfather things in. So it was the same type of thing. And then on top of that, if you don't, uh, if you like uh, more <laughs> great news, there's a bill that just came out and it looks something like this. It is uh, HR 4741. Rep. Uh, Donald Bayer. It's uh, very long if you want to read like 30 or 40 pages. I will link that in, in into it for you. If you do not like to read uh, all that time, because maybe you got something else going on, I'm going to uh, just paraphrase what this bill is going to do. What this bill is going to do is Congress intends to regulate crypto on a level uh, very deeply. They're going to designate Bitcoin, Ether, and their hard forks as commodities and regulate their transactions accordingly. They're going to create legal uncertainty for all of their crypto projects and ICOs by allowing them to be labeled as securities. They're going to ban the use of unauthorized stable coins. Well, how are they going to do that? They're going to rebrand smart contracts to take longer than 24 hours to deliver as futures contracts and regulate. And they're going to redefine legal tender and change the way money is created by the Federal Reserve and authorize the issuing of a digital or digital dollar of which all transactions are recorded. So I think this is a uh, massive disaster. And this has been uh, under the radar. And I want to thank uh, the person that brought it to my attention on Twitter. Twitter is a great place. Crypto Twitter, you can find all the information you ever want to know. So the thing is with this, if you want to get involved in this in the United States, so all you have to do is, first of all, I'll link this here. There is, uh, the committees are the uh, financial, the House Financial Services, Agricultural, Ways and Means. All you have to do is go here. You can click on Agricultural, Ways and Means, the other one. And uh, once you go there, just click on the, there's a little hamburger menu here, and about, Commodity Exchange Energy Credit, about here. And it'll say the members. And all these members will pop up and you can, talk to all these guys, just email them or call them whatever and do and say, look, this bill uh, cannot pass because it is not defined well enough and it's going to uh, stifle innovation. That's all I got to say, stifle innovation. That's it, in an email or a call. Also, uh, here's the Ways and Means Committee. Again, you just click on About and uh, you just click on Committee Members and then it'll bring them all up. There they all are. Very simple, very easy. The worst one though is this one right here. Uh, this is the Financial Services uh, by Chair, Chairwoman Maxine Waters. Look, I know you probably hate Maxine Waters. Do not give this uh, video a thumbs down because you don't like her. Give it a thumbs down because you think it's awful. But uh, this one's the worst. To find out all the different members, you got to go to, go to About Us and I'll pull up some uh, the full committee and I'll give a thing and then it'll talk about uh, where you can find them, maybe potentially, kind of sucks, but uh, that's where you can find everybody and you can send the information. And we did this last time with the last bill that came about and uh, we almost got it uh, reversed, but it was the most amount of outpouring in a technology sector uh, since we saw for uh, the last uh, innovation as far as like stifling the internet. So yeah, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. And that is what is going on as far as, um, I guess you would say like a little negative news about what's happening. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about some good stuff. Pretty much why banks might lose this or the uh, old guard 
and this is what is going on. So this was actually from uh, Jake Chervinsky. Uh, he's a lawyer one of the, uh, at a crypto project. I forgot the name, it escapes me right now, but he says it very simply. And it's a pretty good history lesson if you weren't around. He says, look, the entertainment industry didn't defeat peer-to-peer -peer file sharing by regulation or enforcement, which is what we are seeing right now happening. People are scared, banks are scared, the old old guard is scared, and they're, they're trying to use their power and influence, which they give to the, the uh, chair people, to Congress and senators, because they pay for all those things. That's how America works. And uh, they're going to say, look, we need to get more regulation here, and this is why, and then you know, help us out because we're your buddies. But you have to remember, just like Jake says, it's not about that. Uh, it, you, it didn't really happen because of peer-to-peer. -peer. It just, what happened was they offered better services people were, pay, were willing to pay for. So let me read this again. The entertainment industry didn't defeat peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. That would be like Napster. Everybody was up in arms about that. By regulation or enforcement, they just offer better services. Back in the day, I remember when uh, Napster came about, you could download any type of music that you ever wanted to. It was super simple, really easy. But uh, that was it was totally free. And uh, the powers that be were freaking out. And that was RIAA and MPAA. And then what they did was they said, you know what, we're just going to offer some services that people want to download, download this and, and have it accessible quite easily. And now, do you know anybody who uses Napster? Do you know anybody who uses a, a file download service that they don't have to pay for? No, because they innovated their way out of it. But here's the thing. Banks aren't innovators, and they're not going to do it. And Jake says it perfectly. He says, the banking industry won't defeat decentralized money and finance by regulation or enforcement. It'll just use crypto. And again, they are not innovators. So just remember that if you think like, ah, they're going to shut us down and everything else. Well, they, they can try, but it's inevitable about what's going to happen. And then on top of that, let's take a look at uh, what's going on in the traditional markets real quick. Because yesterday we had a huge sell-off, right? And huge sell-off... You had a huge dip and it was all over the news. We talked about it yesterday. So the S&P 500, just the basic top 500 uh, great biz, or big companies, you're looking at 43.14 and everybody was freaking out yesterday. They couldn't believe it. And then uh, if you take a look at what happened today, let's see. Over here, nice little fat rebound. So pretty good from Monday to Tuesday. Everything looks to be okay. And then it just kind of went up that way. And then on top of that, if we want to take a, a real big look into what's happening in traditional finance, here's some more good news. Take a look at the 10-year Treasury yield, too. I think this was very important in terms of giving people some sense that it was not some broad macro stress event because the yields, yes, they were down yesterday, but in a very modest way. And nothing that really kind of changed the idea that we're firming up in terms of yield. Now, maybe we're capped at 1.4. We haven't really been able to get over that. But the point being, it was not really a, a rush, a headlong rush for safety, as we talked about a lot of these issues, such as Evergrande, uh, which has been an ongoing thing for six months. We spent all day yesterday talking about it, but this has been a six month meltdown. So maybe that also uh, is reflected in the fact that it wasn't necessarily something fresh that just hit the markets yesterday. And there you go. And he's absolutely right. So we saw a big downturn and everybody was freaking out. And of course, the sky was falling and we'll never recover. And then once again, we do the same thing. Uh, you know, the traditional market recovers. However, I think there's so many different players from traditional finance dabbling into our space because we're OK with them spending money, but we hate when they sell. Uh, that is exactly what's going on here. So we see a little bit of a, a, a recourse traditional, but now we're still suffering the effects over here. However, do I think that crypto will do pretty well? I do, and here's a little proof. So if we take a look at that, and then also just a little uh, history note, take a look at these great numbers to put in perspective. In 2015, six years ago, Bitcoin was 230. 2016, and this was, this was uh, September 20th, 2016, 600 bucks. 2017, in September 20th, $3,900. 6,500 in 2018, 2019. And these were bad years, I, I might remind you. 6,500, that was in crypto winter. Still not too bad. 10,100, 2020, not that great because it was kind of a low year, 10,9. And look, in 2021, $44,000. So if you think I have to ask yourself, well, where's where are things going you want to hope for the best but expect the worst i still believe that we're going to have more dips to come that's why i'm dollar cost averaging my dips essentially but i think in the long run we're okay and speaking of that 
If we take a look at the long run, we can't not help but mention stock to flow. And just like he says here, Bitcoin is below 34 trigger. And this was on June 20th. And he says, look, in June, I sketched this out, but I still think we're on track to 100K in December. And he says this was his, his price on chain based August, nah, 47K. September, 43K, because every single September for the last four years, it's been pretty bearish. We talked about that at length in the last, I don't know, 20 videos. October, he sees 63K, November, 98K, December, 135K. And uh, everybody's got their own interpretation of Plan B. Some people say, well, like September, you know, they, some people say, well, that's the floor. That's the lowest it can go. And some people say, no, that's not what it is. It's actually the price at the end of the month. And you don't know what you're talking about. So I just say it's around there. And then we'll just go with that. And that's where I see things uh, as far as going. And that, my friends, is pretty much the good news about what's happening. It always seems to happen in September. It's just a bad, junky month. And I'll link the, the, the video where we talked about that. But every single time, well, not every single time, it seems to do pretty darn well as we rebound into October, November, December, maybe January, February. But again, not financial advice, just financial opinion. And then to, uh, to finish all up, it's going to throw one more thing in there. And that is that uh, I'm pretty good at dollar cost averaging. I'm, I'm pr I've kind of figured that whole thing out. I think you can tell on this channel. But uh, I'm horrible about taking profits. I'm just, just bad at it. I mean, I do it. I've been doing it along the way. But I could have done better. And that's the whole thing is just improving about what your, your shortcomings are and just admitting that, hey, you're not perfect and you got to do better and, and uh, learn some things. So I'm going to team up with... Uh, uh, the folks over there at Market Rebels or Market Rebellion, and uh, we're going to go over and and uh, see if they can help me uh, fix that issue. Now, my channel is not going to change. It's the same form and everything else. But uh, somewhere along the way, I'm going to talk about my process of taking profits because it seems like nobody talks about taking profits, at least not that much. Everybody talks about buying, buying, buying. But I'm going to I'm going to talk about taking profits along the way here and there, how it relates to taxes, also for staking and everything in between, because, you know, you have to think about those things. And look, that's it for today. So look, if you made it all the way to the end, I want to say first, thanks for uh, sticking with me all the way. I really appreciate it. If you like today's video, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And then if you like these types of videos, go ahead and subscribe. We talk about these things every single day uh, about what's going on in the market right now. So that is it for now. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next one.